my feeling is that furniture can be art and art can be furniture. And if you're not using that table, then it's a piece of art in your environment and it should enhance your environment. I'm Glenn Garino. I'm a studio furniture maker and this is a solo show of my work uh, being shown at NJIT in Newark and the show is being presented by uh, Professor Matthew Gossip. Um, some people say, say when they look at my work it's, it's eclectic and, and I guess that's because I, I've worked for I, I work designing pieces for different environments and different clients and different tastes. This mirror I call High Society. It's kind of an Art Deco mirror. This mirror is, is a nice res representation of really beautiful material. However, I think my, my, all my pieces have common threads. And some of the common threads are I have, I have a tremendous respect for the material. So I'm always trying to present the material as well as I can. And most of my work has a lot of, of free-flowing, curvilinear aspects to it. The other thing is I'm trying to adopt the Asian uh, thought of elegant simplicity. When I started to design this, I was thinking more of a samurai sword with this being the handle and this being the blade. Samurai swords are one of the most elegant design things, simple elegance. This is a, uh, a table that I call Asian interpretation. It, uh, it shows my absolute uh, wonder of, of Japanese uh, art. I try to be as eco-friendly as possible. This is wood from the tree that was cut down in front of my house and after going over there and talking to the people doing the, doing the work I found that it was wonderful wood called Northern Catalpa. After sanding this I realized that it was it had this really beautiful white kind of ivory tone to it and I decided on a glass top because I really wanted to show the piece underneath. I have a piece here I call Storm. It's a tree that had fallen down in a storm and it fell down a number of years ago and I was, I was asked if I could help the person cut it up a bit because it had fallen in their neighbor's yard. And I thought I had a really good direction for it and, and had sketches and thought, thought I really had it planned out. But when I started, I, I didn't like where I was going with it. So I literally, um, held half of that pe half of that table for a, a year two years before I actually went back on it this piece um, like I said it was one one um, one plank and uh, it, the table itself had to be this size and the coca bola was rescued coca bola I also want to continue to work on form so that my pieces um, get even more and more sculptural. But I never want to lose the furniture function of the piece. It's kind of a, a, simple, a simple form. Uh, it's a little architectural in here. The top layer, uh, beautiful, beautiful rift oak that I cut and then put back together so I can get a continuity of grain. This is, this is an unusual piece for me. I was asked to show some of my work at the uh, uh, New Jersey Performing Arts Center. Before that I looked up music stands because it, you have to know like how high they should be, what the parameters are, but I found that out and then I started draw, drawing a few sketches and I came up with three different music stands that I liked. And I decided to go along with this one. I like the movement, I like the animal-like shapes to it. The ga gallery can go up or down, and it's a simple locking method. I was drawing in my sketchbook, which that in itself is not very unusual, and I came up with this shape. 
I like it. I, th I think it's I think it's a, a successful piece. But it is a real departure from a lot of my other stuff. Okay, this is a, a table I call in tune. And I guess I came up with the name because I thought the legs looked like a tuning fork. It's made out of curly maple. The stretcher appears to go right through. The top is a very unusual top and it turned out to be very difficult to make because all of these curves I, I literally made by hand. So even though I tried to, to get a pattern off of it, I still had to bandsaw it and hand, hand scrape it to fit it in. I'm very dedicated to the fact that I'll always make furniture. But, I, but I'm also dedicated to the fact that I'm trying to marry good design, art, materials, and the furniture function to be all one piece. Every piece I start, I think that maybe this is going to be my, my finest piece, my best piece. And then at the end of that, for the most part, I look at a piece of mine and, and kind of feel that, well, maybe I could have done something a little different. Maybe the portions could be slightly better. Or, so I'm still striving to produce that elusive, perfect piece for myself. Mm -hmm.